This is Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Centered Ministry, where our focus is centered on the harvest of the world. And where we can't go by air, we go by prayer. We hear a lot of good messages, but is there a word from the Lord? I got good news for you, my friend. There is a word from the Lord. So stay tuned. Play close attention as we prepare now to go into the word. Y'all have James, the second chapter of the book of James. We're going to be going through, I don't know if I, um, I look back over my, uh, notes it's from time to time and i remember how i was telling y'all how sometimes i'm gonna be going god is gonna be bringing us back to messages that we are already preached and sometimes even the even the same topic uh like that message uh last week i preached the word and when i seen it had a topic of the word uh from a previous message that i had ministered unto y'all but it was totally different amen like i told you it's just gonna be totally different it could be the same topics amen but it's gonna be different amen it could be turning to the same books or the bible going to the same verses but yet and still it'll still be different in god wonderful amen but he's he still he brings out some of he reminds us of some of the things we already went over and then he always brings out new revelation as well so i just thank god for how wonderful he is how he's just proving himself to me time and time again it's a wonderful thing you know to be proven by god amen to be confirmed uh by god that you are hearing god uh how many is that exciting to you I mean, that should be happening to y'all from time to time as well as believers in uh, just believers in Jesus Christ. It'll be also uh, a confirmation from time to time. Just God just letting you know that witness that's in your spirit that you're in the right place. You know, you know, you're in the right place sometime at the right time, however you want to put it. Or you're in that right, you know, you're doing the right thing. You're in the right position in the, in the particular season. It just feels awesome just to have. That's what you call relationship, you know. And, and we just thank God for just having that real tangible uh, relationship with him you know we got a relationship with the god of the universe the god that created the worlds i sometimes i think we take that a little lightly i think we kind of overlook that you know the one that we really have a relationship with the one that really that, that's calling on calling and beckoning us to communicate with him the one that created everything you know if, if we if we remind ourselves uh, of just those truths i just mentioned i mean we you 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 couldn't wait to get into the presence of the creator of the world. You couldn't wait to study or to spend any uh, time that he's, uh, you know, beckoning or calling for you to spend with him at any given time because he is the most awesomest one in the world. He created the world. He created everything that's in the world. The Bible declares that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. And he want to have a relationship with us how wonderful is that hmm that's why we always that's me and my wife was in prayer that's why we was like man we just begin to look at even when you think you're right you know you're doing all you can to be right but if you look at yourself in the righteousness of god you still ain't nothing <laughs> the bible is so true it has all our righteousness you know outside of jesus it is little i don't care how good you think you are outside of jesus righteousness you ain't nothing but a filthy rag i ain't nothing but a filthy rag you understand i mean man just a little just what we're talking about right now it, i mean just god himself and we neglect the god of all creation we are like we too busy to spend time with the one that woke how crazy is that he woke you up but we ain't got time to spend with him that's backwards hmm See how we get into the word though. But today we're gonna to be talking about uh uh y'all can write this down. Believe to the point of action. Say it again. Believe to the point of action. I'm gonna be slowing down, I'm teaching it. And uh also the, the subject under that will be biblical faith. You know, I'm always talking about biblical faith. So it's believe to the point of action, uh, and biblical faith. I guess that's what they would call a topic and a subtopic. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, believe to the point of action. And we're also going to be talking about biblical faith. It's all going to tie in together. And we're going to start reading here uh, in the book of James. going to be a lot of reading on today. Amen. Somebody say, thank God for the word. Amen. We're going to be getting into the word of God. You can't go wrong like that. Amen. <laughs> just stick to the word of God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we prepare now to go into your word. God, I just ask you, Father, just to help me to articulate this word, God, the way that you gave it to me this morning. 
just this morning. So, Father, just bring it out, God. I trust you always do. But, Father, I just don't want to miss a point that you want to speak to us, oh, God, and bring out every revelation that you want us to, to be revealed to us is our prayer from the heart. And, God, I pray that this people will not allow this word to slip, Father, but they will hold it dear to their hearts and they begin to apply the principles of this word. In Jesus' name, if you agree, say amen. Okay, let's go here to James chapter 2. We're going to begin reading here at verse number 14. You have it? What do if it profit, my brethren? Do a man say he have faith and have not works? Question mark. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace. Be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doeth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. It's not possible. And I will show thee my faith by my works. This preaching all by itself, ain't it? Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. And thou always hear me quote this, paraphrase this. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is Dead. Do y'all see that right there? That's what we're going to talk about, biblical faith. And then we're going to go to an example on biblical faith. We're going to turn to, I think it's in the book of Mark. We're going to turn there in a little bit. We're going to go to an example on what I'm talking about when I say biblical faith. Because you see people, just think about how we move in faith on the earth right now. You understand how we move in faith? You just think about, you know, some instances. We'll say certain things or uh, just say I can pray. Let's see, I, I can pray for this sister right here. Her foot, she could have a, a broke foot or something. And I could go over there and pray the prayer of faith. And man, she says she believes. I say, I believe. I pray the prayer of faith. I say, in the name of Jesus, I command this foot to be healed right now. You know what she's going to do? I, I, I'm not, you know, it's just an example. You know what the, the normal, the regular, just the normal, just average day, Christian would do in our faith, she'll just say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. She'll, and she'll just sit right there. She would not get up and try the foot. You see what I'm saying? You want to see the difference. <laughs> but, but she believes now. Now, listen to what we're talking about now. But she does believe that Jesus can heal her foot. That's just one aspect of faith. And you can also bring that up under belief. You, you could believe in something, but you have to take that belief into, a, you understand, you have to go a next step, another, another phase into action in order for you to get results from God. And y'all know that's true. Raise your hand. That's true. That's normally how it happens in church. We pray for somebody. You know, they got a physical ailment in their body right there. They come to the altar. They raise their hand. They even be slain in the spirit on the floor. But they will not, they won't go confessing that they're healed. A lot of them won't even check out and see whether they've been healed. Yeah, just go through the religious, you understand, the, the, you know what we go through, the, the emotions of religion that we go through. But we want to, we want, we want to get to the place in, in, in the body of Christ, uh, not even in the body. I want, I'm responsible for y'all. I want us to get to the place that we can really receive answers from God. Amen. And I believe that's why God has me where we are right now. So belief, that definition of belief, I just want the simple definitions of it. I didn't try to get deep on it at all. Uh, belief, it means uh, simply to accept something as true. And how many, we all on that level, amen. To accept something as true, feel sure of something. To feel sure of, or regard it as true. To be convinced, you can even be convinced of something. But you being convinced about something and you not acting on what you're convinced about still is not going to get you any results. You understand? I could be convinced all day long that that truck, a truck out there drive. I know it. I'm convinced to drive, but that truck is never going to drive until I get. You understand what I'm saying? You have that's what it means. Faith without works 
is dead. You, you, can't, you can't prove that you have faith if you don't have no works. That's why a lot of people that get saved. You understand, somebody that really believe that they are saved, they're going to have, they're going to have action. They're going to believe that that blood has really cleansed them. They're not going to go right back into sin. You understand, not even being, not even having received the Holy Ghost, any power to, you understand, the keeping power or the comforter, they haven't even received the comforter, but just by them believing that, that, uh, that, that Jesus has just saved them, they believe that Jesus really came in their heart, they believe everything that preacher told them, they're not going to go back, they're going to believe it to the point of what? Action. They're going to believe it to a point of a change. They're not going to go back to what they used to do. They're going to start doing some things on their own because they truly believe that they have been cleansed. They have been forgiven. If you truly believe that you have been forgiven, why you want to go right back and commit the act? Uh, you know, even some people immediately they're not truly believing. It is it the people fall all the time? Nope. Sometimes it's our fault, the one that's delivering the message or delivering that word to them because we don't explain it to them. Because a lot of times we just caught up ourselves as the one that's giving out the information. We just caught up on the emotions of it. We caught up on the tears that's flowing. I've seen a lot of tears flowing. Amen. At Crusades, we, I did many tent revival. Going to start doing them again. When I was up under my uh, apostle at our ministry, we did many tent revival, many street crusades. I seen many tears, but the people that was that was crying caught tears, and some of them were slain on the ground, gave me the wrong phone number. You know, <laughs> as we try to get comfort information after service, get them saved. Drive all the way across town. He say he ain't going. But I, like, what I'm saying, they wouldn't, I couldn't even get them to church the next day. So emotions don't mean nothing. You understand? That's why God, he's looking at the, the condition or of the heart. You know, the ones that, the one with the broken and a contrite spirit. Just because you got tears, that don't necessarily even mean your heart is broken, that your spirit is broken. Because some people just emotional. I, 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 knew, I knew some people uh, that, that they'll cry at a drop of a dime. You understand? They'll try at a service like that. They get emotional. You understand? But a lot of times, if you're not careful as a, a believer in Christ, if you want witnessing to somebody or even as a preacher or somebody that's uh, having altar calls or leading people to salvation, you got to be careful that you don't get caught up in the emotions of people and you don't explain to people uh, what's literally happening to them. You understand what I'm saying? So because I want you all to receive literal answers from God, I'm trying to teach you biblical faith. Biblical faith, you'll always see biblical faith being demonstrated through after somebody said they believe God, they had actions to follow what they said they believe. And we're going to go and we're going to show you biblical examples of what I'm talking about. But he says, let's go from verse 15 and work down again. Uh, he says, uh, if a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warned and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What do it down? What is the profit? Man of God is saying, you could be, I could speak in tongues, do all this stuff, and say, be warm in Jesus' name. But I ain't give you a coat. It's still gonna be cold outside. Huh? I can say be warm all day. But I, and then that, that's something that you have the power to do. You gotta understand that now. You see what I'm saying? You got to sometimes, God, God, yeah, we speak faith, but after you speak faith, you have to do sometimes what you have power to do. After you release the faith into that individual's life, you understand what I'm saying? Now, I'm giving you this coat. I, I'm giving you this coat what it takes for you to be warm. Now, you just got to go trust God now. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I've given you a word and I've given you something tangible for you, you, for you to hold on to. And some situations are like that. You say, even so, faith. If it have not works, it is dead being alone. Yes, amen. yes, yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me that faith without thy works. How can you do that? Y'all talk back to me. You can't do that. It's impossible to do that. It's impossible. Now you see why, how, without faith, it's impossible to please. You can't please God. Without faith, you and basically I'm saying you can't please God without action. Jesus even told that's what he means when he say you you draw not to me with your lips but their hearts. Or he said if you love me, he said keep my commandments. If you love me, 
do, do, do my will. If you love me, be obedient. If you love me, walk out my word. Am I right? So it's impossible. Somebody say impossible to please God without faith. Got to move with faith. I had to move in faith this past weekend. Amen. Some things had happened. I don't like to tell y'all everything. I don't tell you everything. But some things that happened financially uh, that concerned this trip. Amen. <laughs> it wasn't our fault at all. Something just happened. What did I tell my wife? I said, well, I said, well, you know, I had to calm down. Thank God I had just came off a good little fast. I couldn't even respond. You understand my flesh was so dead. It didn't even respond how I would have responded. I would have, I would have failed that test. <laughs> but I was like, hmm, I just thought about it. And then I, at first I said, I said, well, just have to wait and do that. But then I said, nope. I said, you know, because I thought about what I'm teaching you. You see what I'm saying? I thought about what I'm teaching. I thought, I think about what I'm preaching. This word is not just for you, it's for me as well. Number one, it's for me first, because it comes to me. So I thought about it. I mean, this all happens in a matter of seconds. You know, it just clicked back. And I said, man, uh, we're going to keep doing what we're going to do. Da, 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 da. And then things already working out. Because I kept moving. Me just saying I believe God and don't do nothing, God wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have done that. He, wouldn't have, he can't move like that. But I was just testing with this. Y'all just going, y'all ain't got to worry about that. It's all taken care of. Everything good. But I'm going to tell y'all, probably that'd be something we could talk about when we get in the airport or something. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the devil tried us. He tried us. He tried us. Friday night, too. That's why I was lingering in service. I was checking. I was handling business in service. But y'all was like, why are you coming out? But I was handling business Friday night. But everything is okay to the glory of God. But I, I, I moved before I even got this word. You understand? But I moved and I said, nope, we're going to do everything that, that we was going to do. We was out there doing everything we were going to do. And, and lo and behold, everything was just working out. It, it just made it clearer. I mean, God just, it, and the more you go, the clearer he makes it. Like, it was always going to work out anyway. It's just so simple. But if I would not have moved, and no telling what would have happened. You understand? If I wouldn't have did what I did, the devil could have just did whatever he was, the whole thing was designed to do. Amen. So we just thank God for that. I'm living this thing. Say, Pastor, living this thing. I'm living it. I'm preaching it and I'm living it to the glory of God. It says here, show me, I'm in verse 18 still, show me thy faith without thy works. I'm teaching for real today. I'm going to take my time. Don't go to sleep. But you got to learn this because I want you to receive some real answers from God. Amen. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe, and they tremble. See, that's, that's talking about here. Let's see. Let's get some more meanings of faith. Let's go. Uh, let's get some meanings of faith. We got belief. I got a simple uh, definition. Faith uh, means complete trust. Somebody say complete trust. And whenever you go into a study or teaching on faith, you're always going to come up with that word trust. Trust is a whole nother level. Study on your own time. Trusting. You're, you're fully persuaded by something. You understand? And we're going to see the example in the Bible. It blew my mind. I read this. This has been preached. What I'm getting ready to read. When we go to Mark, I believe, the fifth chapter. But it was just like, man, it, it, it shocked my spirit when I read it. I was like, Lord, I, I don't even know if I have been, in, you know, up until I don't know if I have been believing you like that. You understand? I can admit that. I don't know, Lord. And, and that if I have been believed, you're going to see what I'm talking about once we get to Mark chapter 5. But he said, believers that there is one God that do as well. The devils also believe in tremble. Now, this faith definition, now, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. But also, faith means, uh, y'all might not be able to write this. I'm going to have to go back and watch this. Like, There's a lot of information. It said, believe firm. Belief. A firm belief. Firm persuasion. Assurance. Firm conviction, faithfulness. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance that the Lord is working. The assurance. Do you know that's not that's not likely now. That's a you are fully you are sure that God is working in the thing you believe in for. You are assured about that. Y'all see that? Now this ain't easy now. This this is biblical faith. You are assured whatever you believe in for, he is working in it. He working on it. We'll take this lightning now. Conviction, faithfulness. Faith is confidence in what we hope for 
and the assurance that the Lord is working. Even though we cannot, even, even though we can't see it, faith knows that no matter what the situation in our lives or someone else's, that the Lord is working in it. Somebody say biblical faith. It is the act whereby a person lays hold of God's resources, becomes obedient to what he has prescribed and putting aside all self-interest and self-reliance, trust him completely, complete trust in God. Y'all ready? It is an un- Qualified surrender of the whole of one's being in dependence upon him. It is wholly trusting and relying upon him for all things. It is not just a mental assent to the facts and realities of truth. Or, in other words, you could say an acceptance of the facts. And that's all this is saying uh, right here about the devils also believe in truth. They accept the fact. Yeah, Jesus, they believe it. Yeah, they know. But it, you got to go beyond that. You understand? It's a, that's why you got a lot of people that believe that Jesus died, believe that he rose again. They accept those facts. That's what it means to believe. You accept the facts. You understand? They, they believe, but they're not saved. You understand? I believe that Jesus died and rose again before I got saved. I believe that what was told to me. How many of us believe that? And thank God, because that was a gift for us to believe that. For him to allow us to believe that when we weren't saved. But it has to go further for you to reap the benefits of the salvation. It's something that you have to do. That's what people understand. When the Bible tells us repent before the kingdom of heaven, it means to turn. It means to turn away from. It means to, when you repent, you're turning away from, you changing your mind, you're forsaking, you're letting go. You understand? That's a work. You have to do that part for God to do his part. For it to be true salvation. For you can see the fruits of salvation. For you can see a fruit of the, the miracle working God in your life. But you can see the miracle of that born again nature begin to work in our life. And this all ties together, saving faith is healing faith. Remember I taught that? It also Because it's the same faith that you got to have. All of us can raise our hands and say, we believe. You, I know you believe because you're here right now. That you believe that when you ask Jesus Christ to come in your life and save your soul, you believe he done that. And you, this is a result of it. You're still here. Some of y'all 20, 25 years or so, or even plus years. You're, you're proving that you believe that. But it's the same faith in everything that we believe in God for. Because you believe that you've yet, after all these years, you still are producing action off that day, whenever that day was, that you said that you believed and that you had biblical faith. Amen. But we got to use that in everything. Amen. But what thou, O vain man, what thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? We'll go ahead and read it on. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? We had offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Look at that. That's a perfect example of faith. Isaac was, well, was his promised son, right? Gave him his son in his old age. Performed the miracle, allowing him to get strength to get a son in that, in that age. And then God tells this man to go kill his son. And the man of God trusts God, so he was going up to literally do it. He was out. The angel had to call from afar and said, Abraham, do you understand? <laughs> he was literally going to do it because he trusts God. Because God, you know, if he, if he, this is what he want me to do, I trust that he must going to raise him up or he going to give me another son. How does trust God like that? That's real. This, that's what this is biblical faith. You know, his work, that was a work. Him going up to get ready to go and sacrifice, that was a work. You understand? According to what he said he believed, that was a work. According to the God he said he believed in. Just showing him, hey, I do believe you. I do trust you. I do have faith in you. Hmm? Different now. Whole nother level. Biblical level here. 
Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? It goes together. Can't have, hey, if faith and works have to go together. And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which said Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Don't get that twisted because you know how the scripture says it's not of works lest any man should boast. But they go, they have to go together. That's why he said, you see then how faith by works, a man is justified and not by faith only. It's not by faith only because if you really have faith, you're going to, works going to automatically come if you truly got faith. Huh? Am I teaching right? Now let's go. Turn here. Let's get into it now when I'm showing y'all the example of biblical faith. Mark. We'll be done in a minute or two. Mark chapter 5. We're going to begin reading verse 21. You have it say amen. Y'all quiet here with y'all. What, what, what y'all in the teaching mode too? Y'all taking notes or what's going on? Y'all good? The message, y'all good? Amen. Y'all quiet. Y'all thinking, huh? Amen. I was thinking too. <laughs> Y'all ready? Mark chapter 5, verse 21. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him. And he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter is liar. My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her that she may be healed. And she, what? Yeah. See how you talking? That right there just blew my mind. This ain't the point I'm getting to, but that, that I got to underline. But she, but that's how we got to think. What did she say? And she shall live. That's a whole nother level of faith. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. That's key. Now listen now. And Jesus went with him. Much people followed him and thronged him. So we had a whole lot of people around him, right? And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had, what? Heard hmm? of Jesus. Underline heard. When you go back, hopefully you'll study this on your own time. When she had heard, you know how the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why it's so important to hear the word of God. But when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, this would just shook the core of my existence when I read this. And I don't read this many years. How many of y'all have seen this verse? Over 20 some years, I'm looking at people in here been saying just as long as I have or longer. But it shook my core when I seen this. For she, for she said, if I may, but if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. I don't even think y'all got it. She said, if I would but touch his hope, she said, I shall. She was already convinced. How can you? God can't deny nothing like that. She said, I shall. But it said when she had heard of 
Jesus. So she heard the miracles. Just like we hear when we come to church, we hear the miracles that Jesus can perform. We, we preached all our lives. We, that's, like, that's us hearing what Jesus can do. Seeing Jesus do miracles in other people's lives. But when she have heard of Jesus now, she have, uh, she, she done, she done accumulated this type of faith. She said, I shall be made whole. That thing did something to me. I was like, Jesus, forgive me. I mean, but that's, that's that type of faith is scary. Because you, I mean, it's not scary to the sense of scary, but it's scary to the sense of like, Lord, because we always, well, what if you don't? Then, I mean, I just, I don't know, it's just so much that's going on in your mind. And if you don't have so many, I'm there, I done been there too. I mean, come on now. Let's be real. To say, I, you, you, but you understand, you believe, but then you got reserve if you be truthful. Just like we might go to uh, Mark 9, chapter, we read that, was it Friday? Mark chapter 9, we started out on that, on our, our first Friday, third Friday prayer. I think we started out on that when the man said, I believe. But help thou, my unbelief. See how, now you see the, see how this is tying together? He believed. He accepted the facts. But Lord, help the part of me that's going to believe that this is actually finna happen. Totally different. We all accept the facts. We all believe that Jesus can do it. We all believe that Jesus can do it. I believe God can do God can make that speak a man right now if he, want, if he, if need, if he wanted to. But there's another thing, believe he actually gonna do it. You know, God ain't gonna do nothing willy nilly now. You know, but but if he want, you know, there's another thing, believe you understand. That's a whole nother thing to it. But that is what. And then I heard another man that I was studying didn't have nothing to do with the message, but he was saying you have to believe in that moment. That's what we miss it. We don't believe in the moment. That's why I gave the illustration earlier about if I prayed for that young lady's foot right here, she has to believe. If she believe in the moment, she'll immediately get up. You understand? But we don't believe like that. I mean, we, we you know, who, I mean, we got to, we got to, we got to take this thing to another level. We really want to see uh, the works of God in our personal lives and in other people's lives as well. Amen. But this is that, that what it says here. In verse 28, 28 says, for she said, if, let me go back up. I'm going to take my time, make sure we get this sinking in. And a certain woman. I want y'all to, don't forget what we said in verse 24, how all those people thrown him, right? And a certain woman which had an issue of blood uh, 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard, that's key, when she had heard, because I believe if she wouldn't have heard about this, she might, you know, she wouldn't heard the things she heard. I don't think she would have had been able to act. You know, and you got to put yourself in the scene uh, in that time. She not only heard, but I'm sure she probably seen people running back. And she's seen the results of, of things that Jesus may have done. You understand? But if she wouldn't have had those experiences, I don't believe she could have had this type of faith. You understand? When well, she heard of Jesus and came in the press behind and touch his garment. For she, she had already had this uh, in her mind. She already, part four, she left, when she left her house, she already had this. You got to see now, you got to think, read the Bible differently. Remember I told y'all that earlier this year? Got to read it differently than we used to read it before. She already had this in her, she already had this in her spirit. She already had her mind made up what she was going to do. She already had her mind made up that she was gonna she was gonna get to Jesus. And if I'm, I'm gonna touch his coat, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be made whole. I don't want all these physicians. They couldn't do nothing. But he healing. He doing this, doing that. I'm gonna get mine today. And there was a lot of people in that time that didn't get healed from Jesus because they didn't have that type of faith. No matter what town he was in, he only did little miracles because of their unbelief. But she said, it says, uh, let's go for 28 again. But she said, I, she said, if I 
may touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway, somebody saying straightway. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. She felt in her body she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, say immediately, knowing in himself that virtue or some power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press of the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Hmm? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging thee and saying, thou who touch me? Look at them. They're in the corner of mine right now. They grew up, they came to be some great apostles, though. So, but that was in their little growing stages. She's like, man, you know. But hey, y'all done missed it though. Everybody in the crowd was touching Jesus. There's only one woman that received a miracle. Everybody that was touching Jesus could have received a miracle. Hmm? Because they all had, they all, for them to be thronging him, they all accepted the fact that he was the Jesus or the healer. See the difference? But one woman, you say, oh, I know all these people touch me, but no, somebody touched me with biblical faith. <laughs> Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Man, do you see how I told you it shook my existence? All these people around Everybody, even if you're in the church service, wherever you are, it's all the who really touching Jesus. You understand? It could be all of us, 20,000 here worshiping Jesus, but who really touching Jesus? Hmm? Who really touching him? In the midst of the multitude, who's really touching him? I got to read that again. Or Y'all see that though. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself, immediately knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And that's something, man. That just shows you how powerful Jesus, his clothes, she touched his clothes and power of virtue left him. <laughs> huh? Jesus was annoying his clothes. <laughs> but man, look at here. And he looked round about to see her that had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. So it would be really even in the time of faith. Had already made up. She would, she, I mean. Do y'all see? Do y'all see this? Say amen if you see it. Go in peace and behold of thy plan. I mean, when he said behold, she was already made home. When he said behold thy plan, I mean, that thing ain't never coming back again. I love how Jesus did it. Even he, he uh, cast out devils and stuff. Those devils weren't supposed to return no more. Enter no more into him. You know what I'm saying? When you cast out devil, enter no more. Tell that devil, you understand? Enter no more into them. And while he yet spake, there came from, we didn't finish with J.R.S. We ain't forgot about him. All this stuff is happening in the midst of uh, J.R.S.'s daughter being sick. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, thy daughter is dead. She dead. My troll was not a master any further. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto her, unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid. Somebody say, be not afraid. Only believe. Only believe. Now, I want to bring out something, too, now. Now, that woman, now, that was a personal situation. It was just it was between her and God. You see that? Between her and God. As soon as Jesus had heard the word was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the singer, be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James, 
and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to and he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why makest ye this ado? And weep. The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. So they ain't, they really weren't crying for real. They, they, they go from laughing, crying to laughing at the same time. Because, <laughs> you know, they had professional mourn, mourners in those days. That's what they did. They just went, <laughs> you know. So now they laughing. Laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, sometimes you got to put people out. <laughs> got to put them out. <laughs> okay, y'all get out right now. We finna get in here. We finna pray. <laughs> sometimes you got some, some say, sometimes got to put them out. You got to put them out. He take, a, he take a, uh, the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him, with him and enter in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Tala thy kumai, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel rose and walked. See that? She she even got up and walked from the dead. <laughs> you know, but that's good. You understand? She just, it's always, you see one of the, the pattern. It's always action. I know y'all remember the message, the action after the prayer? Always remember. I'm talking about even when it comes to you or you believe in God for something, do something. You know, you, you, you believe in God to heal you. I could pray for somebody right now. You say your back hurt and I pray for your back. You won't even bend down to see if, to check it out. You know what? Your back gonna stay hurting. You understand? See how we quiet? <laughs> we gotta get somebody said we gotta get out of that. For real now. You understand? You 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 pray to be healed or whatever. Uh instead of you saying you healed, you still confessing the problem. Hmm? That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Somebody say that's how we do it. But we all know that now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the connecting power into the spiritual realm, which links us with God and makes him become a tangible reality to the sense, perceptions of a person. Faith is the basic ingredient to begin a relationship with God. Amen. You're going you're gonna to walk in a faith. Somebody say, I'm going to walk in a faith relationship with God. You understand? For real. For you will receive stuff. It's more than just, just believe in God. What's the use of believing in God? You ain't receiving nothing from God. Hmm? You ain't walking in. There ain't no fruits. So ain't nothing happening. Ain't nothing. What they say? Ain't nothing popping. Ain't nothing moving. Huh? God is a God of action. I'm, let's go to Mark chapter 9 and we're going to be done because we went on this Friday. I just want to bring this point out for those of you that miss Friday night prayer. Always we Friday night prayer, we, we've we started uh, opening up with some scripture. Amen. Before we get into prayer, we'll read some verses or so. Mark chapter 9. And I'm going to read what we read Friday and I'm going to be done. Mark chapter 9. We started at what verse, y'all? 14? Look at that. Amen. Got a scholar in the back. 14. Amen. Okay, it says, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about him. And the scribes questioning with them, and straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, why question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they could cast him out, and they could not. Jesus said here, he answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. 
And oftentimes it casts him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if, I, if thou canst believe all things are what? To him that what? Believe it. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. You see, we don't learn what that means now, right? He believed in the fact that God could do it. It was a whole other thing to see. It, it, it's actually going to be done. You understand? Especially right then at that time. He already done, his faith done been shook because the disciples couldn't do it, right? And straightway the father of the child cried out, said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit. I love how Jesus did that. You see what the people in the crowd was coming? What Jesus did, he went in and dealt with that devil. Jesus ain't never wanted no, no crowd. He ain't, Jesus ain't never been no show off. Like we see <laughs> this day and time. Amen. Thy dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? I love that. You see, they want, they, shoot, they want to know why. You understand? Hey, I like that. And he said unto them, this kind come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. I told the saints, because, you know, we, we fast uh, for our first Fridays and third Friday prayers. Amen. We fast up until those days. We've been fasting. Uh, even though it's going to Africa, I know we've been doing extra fasting. And God, like, we came in here Friday night. I say, you are now, because we're getting into prayer. You have been fasting. You have been praying. Those of you who have a fasting life, and you've been praying, you fast consistently, and you pray, you're qualified for this kind. See? The same response I got at first Friday night. You qualify. Do y'all know what that means? Hmm? You qualify for this kind of spirits. You're qualifying for those type of devils. That's why you got, that's why your faith, what I've been trying to do is take your faith into a whole nother level when you go into prayer. You, you are qualified. Amen. You, 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 you without limits in the realm of the spirit. You're qualified if you put applied the, the, the principles of God's word to your life. You could deal with those devils. Amen. You ain't got to shy away from nothing in the realm of the spirit in Jesus name. Because that's what Jesus said, that this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. So we just thank God for his word on today. Uh, we thank God for all of you that came in. I know it's a teaching, teaching, teaching moments, amen, but even in faith, even in faith, don't get it shook. I thank God I teach the balance of faith because when you teach faith, people think that everything, everything is just going to turn out, you understand, hunky door. It's not like that all the time because we, sometimes God has secret things that he does, uh, we don't know, and then we did, then, then, like the woman that was, that was between her and God, the damsel, she she ain't had nothing to do with it. You understand? The son that was possessed by the devil, he really didn't have nothing to do with it. And then sometimes you believe God for other people. They have something to do with it as well as us. It's so many reasons why stuff don't happen. You understand? And you sometimes the Bible even says, I think it's a book of I think it's Isaiah. Please forgive me if I'm wrong. But it says how no man considereth. When a righteous man or a righteous woman is taken away that God is uh, delivering them from the things to come, you know, from the evil to come. You know, sometimes God could be taking people away before they backslide. Sometimes people just fulfill their days and just happen to be a sickness. You understand that, that God allowed to happen to take them out. It's just so many reasons. But you got to always operate in biblical faith. If you want to receive some real answers with God, always remember that God is God, not you, not me, not boo. Amen. If God, all my job is to, is to every time is to believe God. I, I, every time I got to believe God. Somebody say every time I just got to believe God. 
I just got to do what God told me to do. Amen. And make sure that I am truly believing God and it's up to him what the results shall be. But, but nine times ten, you know, you're going to get those results, especially when it's something personal in your own body. Uh, you, you know, you got to act. You got to act on that thing. You got to act on that thing. Amen. You got to act on it to the glory of God. And then when you pray for other people, tell them to act on it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because y'all going to be doing ministries and stuff like that. Y'all going to have, you know, you never know what God going to have you do. <laughs> Amen. You know, but t- t- let, tell them to act on it. You know what I'm saying? You pray for somebody to be healed, for their back to be healed. Go ahead and bend down. Bend, bend up and down. Try it out. You understand? And most of the time you do that, God do it right then. It's just an act of faith. Just an act of faith. Amen. So we just thank God for this balance of faith. But that thing really, really did something to me. Reading about that, uh, that, that woman with that issue of blood. Like, man, she said, I shall. She already knew it. If she was already convinced, I'm, I, I got my, I shall be made holy. So we gonna, we thank God that he's taking us to another level in him. And that ain't necessary to say that that was uh, no big old bomb of faith. <laughs> she just believed what she believed. I don't think it's the amount of faith that we have. Because the Bible says if you have a faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you understand? You can move mountains. So it, it can't be like the real, you know, amount, but it's just you, you can't doubt. That's the key thing. You can't doubt. You got to fully believe. got to be fully persuaded about what you say you believe in God for at, in, at any given time. And we are going to do that to the glory of God. We're yet going to believe God in Jesus' name. So we just say, thank you, Father. You can stand to your feet now for this word. I see all the saints here, but anybody, amen, y'all, y'all ain't backslid. Everybody need any need rededication or anything that needs to take place. Uh, you can do that. Uh, I, I dare not, with the help of the Lord, not give you an opportunity to come to the altar. How many know the altar is for, for saints as well? Sometimes we forget that. The altar is for saints as well. Amen. Sometimes you, you might need a little alteration. You might need to just walk down and get some things broke off your life. Sometimes you need hands laid upon you. Amen. And some things you sometimes you need some yokes to be destroyed or something. To, hey, don't feel free to come on down. We all need help. Amen. We all need help. We, we all, none of us are anything without Jesus Christ, but we're everything in him. Amen. We're, I am worthy in Jesus' name. Don't never say you ain't worthy. Jesus made you worthy. Amen. I understand what people mean when they say they're not worthy. I understand that. But in Christ, you are worthy. He died to make you worthy to receive the promises of God. Without Jesus Christ, yes, you are not worthy. So we just say thank God for those of you that are saved. Amen. You feel you've been walking out your salvation. Amen. Thank God for you right now. But maybe somebody that's watching me don't have have that testimony. Amen. If that's you, you're, you need to be saved. You're a backslider. You need to be reclaimed. There's a number that's right there at the bottom of your screen. It's Erico 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, be blessed of God. Come on, put your hands together for the teaching on today. Pastor Anton Bronson of World Harvest Center Ministry. Perhaps you are blessed by the broadcast that you just viewed. If so, we want to hear from you. We want you to dial this number that's at the bottom of your screen right now because somebody's going to be waiting on just your call. The number is Erico 904-713-3609. Again, it's Erico 904-713-3609. Until next time, we'll be waiting to hear from you.